Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Behind every book is an incredibly talented author and a great story. In this segment, we'll get to know author Natasha Nohanovic. Natasha was born in Croatia in 1994 amidst the Bosnian War. She moved to Germany and later to Canada. Natasha is a translator, interpreter, writer, producer, and a director. And she has been very crazy busy lately. This summer, her documentary film, Close the Door, premiered at the Sarajevo International Film Festival. And her debut novel, The Boy's Marble, was published by Guernica Editions. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Natasha. Uh, thank you so much, Crystal. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> oh, and it's so lovely to meet you. And I so look forward to asking these questions to you and to get to know you a little better. <laughs> uh, me too, me too. <laughs> so what I'll do, Natasha, is I will fire out some questions. Feel free to give me a one word answer or if you want to answer in, you know, a few sentences or paragraphs, go for it. I leave it in your <laughs> capable and hands to answer how you want. Are you ready? All right. Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. <laughs> so number one, Natasha, what is your favorite flower? Oh, that's so cute. I love sunflowers. They somehow, you know, they look so sweet and, um, you know, I like how they sort of just turn and they're just so cute. Yeah, Your, wall, your wall behind you is like sunflower. Oh, you're right. That's true. I guess yellow is one of my favorite colors. That's another reason. <laughs> uh, Natasha, what is your earliest childhood memory? Oh, somehow the seaside comes to mind right now. I oh. guess it depends on my mood, what comes first. But today it's like the seaside with like ice cream oh. and... Uh, in Croatia and Bosnia also um, just sort of living like a kind of carefree um, diving in the sea and looking for shells and stuff <laughs> oh, <laughs> and not coming out of the water until like my hands are you know look like raisins <laughs> oh it sounds beautiful how yeah. old were you when you came to Canada to Canada we moved in 98 so I was 14 um but before that we were in Germany actually for almost five years yeah 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 and so, how many languages do you speak that's a good question <laughs> <laughs> officially three but now that I'm in Montreal and have been here for seven years, um, French, I can understand a little better now, but I I wouldn't say I can hold a, an intelligent conversation yet. Maybe some kind of conversation, but not super intelligent. <laughs> uh, now, yeah. I am fascinated by anyone who can speak multi-languages, such as yourself. Mm -hmm such as yourself and especially oh. writers like my goodness so Natasha what language do you feel allows you to be your most creative I think you know I was surprised when this the novel the boys marble actually initially like it came out in English first wow. because yeah I I you know, I have some explanations for that, but I'm not fully an answer yet. But usually it's either Bosnian, Bosnian, the one, because uh, I don't know, I feel felt more like myself yeah. when I talk to friends or my parents. But then English, Bosnian and English, I guess now. Not so much German. I don't know why. I don't know why. But yeah, I think English. Or it depends on the content of the 
the the writing mm -hmm. but yeah english mm -hmm. was the language that sort of took over when i was writing the boys marvel initially i started in bosnian actually and then oh. it started more in english and that and i'm going to ask this because i think this is really interesting because you had mentioned to me that you wrote your novel by hand yeah yeah is incredible so why did you write your novel by hand i just felt like it actually just started as me at cafe at the cafe with my notebooks where i would always just write certain thoughts and like then the more i sat at the cafe it just started becoming more and more of an actual book like that I could see myself as being a book not just yeah. like kind of random thoughts and then I figured wow like you know I don't think it would have come out quite that way if I like had been sitting at a laptop typing with the intention okay I'm gonna write this novel now it almost organically sort of transitioned from like me walking about town with my notebook oh. and then like just started taking on its own life almost and and then I thought I, I, I need to just like stay in this kind of meditative state and yeah and when I look at the screen I feel it you know it takes me into in, at least in that particular moment it took me out of that particular place so I like to and it has something like you know more I can stay more focused and pensive with just my pencil yes and a piece of paper <laughs> do you also do your films with um with by hand as well a little bit and I did something crazy like I mean I don't know how effective it was with the film but because there's so much work within the software of like forwarding all the footage but I printed out like tiny little um, images of the movie like maybe a, I don't know, a few hundred and then I would like order them on the floor and I used to have an well, my friend used to have an office at the time and I would like put the photos on the walls and stuff. I have even pictures of that. Now when I look at it, I just think, wow, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was like a bit nuts, but it really helped. <laughs> hey, you have to do what you have to do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there was a couch in that office too. So I would like take a nap and I guess it's more immersive, maybe the same as with them. Um, pencil and notebook I found it more immersive like I was living it whereas when I take out my laptop like it feel, feels a little more formal like yeah okay take out my laptop now I do my work whereas like the pencil is like at least in my head it's more like immersed in my actual like life or organic flow of the everyday yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. I, love, I love it. Now, what's the name of the cafe that you wrote your book in? Olympico Cafe <laughs> in Montreal. And it's super awesome. It's like, I don't know. Have, if, have you been, have you been there maybe? No, mm -hmm. I haven't. No. <laughs> but if, if it sounds like a creative space, so maybe I should go there. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's so, I don't know. It has like, that community sense still there so you see all kinds of stories unfold like right in front of your eyes it's I found it really inspiring oh and did you sit in the <laughs> same table at the same table every time or I one of them became my favorites yes <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it was taken but whenever it's free then I would kind of like migrate over um and later I found out it was the owner's grandfather's mm, favorite table. So I, I thought, wow, maybe 
maybe there's like an energy to this table. <laughs> yeah. Now, two, I've got two questions left for you. Second mm -hmm. last question, and it's all about the languages. What language do you dream in? You know, I dream mostly in Bosnian, like, yeah, yeah. Even if the writing sometimes lately more comes out in English, the dreams kind of occasionally in English, but it's really often in Bosnian wow. or just kind of like non-language, but I guess that's also like another type of dream. But yeah, when there is language... I, it's Bosnian yeah uh, and yeah. I always miss Bosnian yeah yeah so you don't get to speak it every day yeah not every day or I call my parents I do I guess I call my parents almost every day so I speak it with them um but I don't hear it immersed like yeah from my environment every day oh. and Although the more years have passed, the more English also yeah. kind of feels. I feel more myself uh, with English as the years have gone by. Yeah. Yeah. But it took it, time. Yeah. Can you say something to us in Bosnian, please? Oh, that's so sweet, of course. Dobar dan, paš mi drago da ste me ovdje o, pozvali i zadovoljstvo mi je pričati sa svima vama. I have no idea what you said, but I, I love the sound of it. It's like music. music. What did you say? <laughs> I said that I feel so happy to be able to talk to you and that it's been a wonderful conversation so far. And that oh yeah pretty much that was it <laughs> and that I hope I'm making sense with what I'm saying <laughs> you are making sense absolutely 100 percent and it's lovely to chat with you too so Natasha last question how has moving from country to country influenced your creative projects I think it's kind of almost at the background, like of every, whether it's more explicitly or, or less, but it's somehow like this, mm, on the one hand, like fragmentation or moving around so much in a way, like kind of mm, makes you see all the things that you had or when you kind of see things from a you know another place it gives you a different perspective but like let's say the situation and the war where you're suddenly forced to move it's kind of like everything like cracks open and like everything you're used to has just disappeared so life is kind of brought down to like to the essence of things and like all the sort of comforts or uh, other layers we put over us, they seem like more transparent. So in a way you almost have like better, or at least the opportunity to access your yourself, your thoughts or like, because your whole world is just so shaken up and everything. Yeah. Um, but then also, yeah, living in like different cultures like Bosnia, Germany, Canada, yeah. and, and then in, within Canada, like Ontario and Quebec. And it's like, it's been difficult. But on the other hand, I feel really blessed at the same time. Like it sucks, like not that the war happened, but being able to um, get to know so many different ways of like living and thinking but at the same time depending on the day sometimes it's fragmenting and I feel like oh my gosh like all these worlds are rolling through my head I don't even know what's going on 
<laughs> so it's a bit disorienting. But then I try to figure out what's going on at and it makes me want to write, I guess. <laughs> oh, well, we're lucky that it does make you want to want to write because, uh, wow, it's incredible. I always mm -hmm. find it really interesting what inspires people. So thank you for that explanation. Thank you. Oh, thank you. my pleasure. <laughs> and viewers, don't go away because I'm not done with Natasha. We've just had a nice little get to know you session. But we still need to find out about her book, The Boy's Marble. So click down below in the description box and it's you can find out the story behind The Boy's Marble. Thank you, Natasha, for answering my questions. Oh, thank you, Crystal, for asking, yes. asking them and being interested. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Very interested. Very interested. And uh, I know for for me as a reader, um, when you know the person behind the book, it to me, it makes the book even more interesting. So I'm thrilled that you've been willing to sit down and, and share some information and answer all my questions. Oh, thanks. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I definitely like agree. It's so nice to know, you know, like the life of of what's behind certain books and yeah yeah people have it, such fascinating stories all of us i guess you know yeah every everyone has a story definitely definitely mm -hmm. okay so viewers mm -hmm. stay tuned thank you natasha <laughs>